Okay. Sorry, I had to take a break for a minute. But uh, anyway, so we're going to change the color of this. And uh, I guess the easiest way, I'm making it more harder than it should be. But uh, it's just to come in here and select a gradient. And uh, we'll pick this color here. And this color here. And then quite literally, we'll just... Yep. Just make it pretty easy. Just like that. Maybe make this one a little darker red. It's okay. It doesn't have to be exact. <clears throat> okay. So we've got the gradient there. So everything is practically in place. The last thing we need to do is add the the claw marks or the three slashes. So let's do that by creating a new group. I'm just gonna name, label this a three. And then you kind of come over here and grab your shape tool. The ellipse tool, I guess, is what it's gonna be called. And we're just gonna draw three claw marks coming up oh, about yay high. And then I'm going to grab this tool here and come in. Maybe not, it's not going to let me. Just to make sure I can just add to it. I want to do it this way. There we go. Yeah, just like this. So then I'm going to come in and add three more. Might be a little too thick, I think. Just like that, come over to the other side. Do one similar, just a little maybe different. And then I'm gonna grab my path selection tool and just select both these and I wanna make sure they're evenly spaced. So I just click like this, oops, wrong button this one and that'll make sure they're all evenly spaced within each other i'm not care that they're evenly aligned i like the little variation in height going across there like that so i'm going to keep that and then i'm going to change them to a red just like that and this layer is going to actually come up on top because i'm not going to blur it and uh i'm going to come in here and i'm going to duplicate this layer i don't know four or five times <sighs> And then I'm going to change the blending mode to this. I think it's color dodge. Let me make sure that's what I have. Oh no, it's set to normal. Okay, shows you what I know. <clears throat> so, all right, normal. But I do know there is a layer in here at the bottom, and I label it as black. Or I make it a black label black. It's going to be black. So now what I'm going to do with these is I think they're white. I'm pretty sure they're all white. Let me just double check. Yep, they're all white except for the back one. So <clears throat> come back into here and I'm gonna blur this one. And I'm gonna keep this one red. I'm gonna go filter, blur, gauge and blur. Yep, it's gonna rasterize it and that's fine. And I'm just gonna, you know, blur it four or five extra pixels. And then I'm gonna join it to a this black layer. So we have what we see here. And then I'm gonna come in, I'm just gonna thicken it up a lot. Thicken it up a lot, you know. Basically just do this, and then I come up to filter, blur, gauge and blur. Do this a few more times until I get, you know, some lines, because this is gonna set the background to creating those additional little slashes in there. And I'll probably say that's okay. Okay, and then all of these, we're gonna make white. White, 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 white. Okay, because these are just going to be influencing the red gradient here, or the blur, these blurred, just, just yeah, anyways, you'll see, I, I'm not speaking correctly. And so, let's just come up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're just going to do a subtle one, maybe of two or three pixels. I don't want them a lot, just a little. 
and we're going to do the same thing on all these we're going to put them on a back black layer so I'm just going to come up here and merge that down and set this blending mode again to uh, color dodge this is where I got the color dodge and then we're going to just move it over to the side yeah somewhere like maybe like right there it's a little bright though I think so I'm going to grab this tool and I'm just going to bring it down which is bringing its white point down maybe somewhere like there and then I'm just going to do the same thing for all these I wonder if I can do it this way nope you got to do filter Gaussian blur and I'm just going to press control F which will repeat that command and then I'm just going to come up here and duplicate this background layer onto every one of these and then merge them down and set their blending well I guess this is what's easier okay sometimes you just don't think when you're working but uh, instead of duplicating these I'm sorry you can just duplicate this one layer four or five times and then we're just going to move it that's a lot easier you're like no duh like you're probably thinking that while I'm doing this so yeah we'll just do that and maybe move some of them down a little more now all of these um, if you look at the logo I do need to do one more thing that I just remembered and that's okay it doesn't matter when you do it because this is all set up independently from everything so anyways we will come in here though I'm gonna kinda transform this one just to give it some additional variety just so it doesn't look all so uniform just transform that okay okay the other thing I need to do I'm gonna turn these off so I can see this better but these right here actually need to be moved in so these ones right here don't actually extend to the left or right on the edges if you'll notice they're just all within the center so I'm gonna grab my marquee tool and just really simply click around it and then grab my V tool and then just scoot it in that's simple if I get a line I'll blur it I'll put a glossy blur, blur onto it do you select it shortcut M for your marquee tool and then we're just gonna make sure I got that. Grab the your arrow tool and then just move it in and deselect. So I do need to blur it because you can see that there's an edge right there, and that's fine. Got and blur. Boom, just like that. And then I'll turn these layers back on. And you can see there's one guy over here to the edge. I don't know what he's doing. Okay, well he wants to be over there, so well we're gonna scale him in. So he's like that. Same thing with this guy, we're gonna scale him in a little more. Yeah. It's a little bit, you know, you have to play around with it a little bit sometimes. We just may have too many on here, huh? Let's see. That one's fine there. I do want to move it in, though. Let's scale that in. Somewhere like right there. Just like that. There's a few too many on this left side. So I'm probably just going to grab my eraser tool. Or move this one over. Yeah. Just do that. That's kind of what happened, how it goes sometimes. You realize you didn't do it exactly how you wanted, but it works. So 
Okay, so that'll work, I think, for the glow there. Now what we also now what we need to do is we need to make it this red color here, which we're gonna do by putting some layer styles and some gradients onto it. So the first thing to do is put a mask onto the layer here, uh, which will help fade the edges. And I'm gonna use just my background to foreground and make sure it's set to black. And then just come in here, and paint, oh, make sure it's on reverse so I can control when it falls off. Right there. Whoop. It's not set to uh, radial, you know, the common troubles of day-to-day -day Photoshop work. Okay, just like that. I don't think I did anything yet on these. I keep them the same. Yeah, they're all the same, so that's fine. And I might extend that. So let's undo that, do the gradient one more time, and I want it to fade maybe out here. But there you go, it, it, it fades it. So the next thing to do is we're going to apply a gradient to these, you know, solid vectors of this, the streaks. We're just going to do a gradient overlay. And I already have a gradient in here made for this, which is right here. And I just need to reverse it. And I'm going to pull up the colors here so you can see it. So it's going from a white, and its location is set at 18, and then it's going at a light yellow which is hue 47, saturation 45, and brightness at 100. And that's set at right about in the middle. And then I've got a red color right here, which is 100% red, and then it fades off to black at position 98, okay? Um, this is crucial you do that. And I think I do the same thing. Yeah, gradient overlay. We do a subtle outer glow, huh? Okay. All right. Well, sounds uh, good. Oh, and it is set to hard light. You know, I don't know why, but uh, I chose hard light. And I'm going to drag it down just a little bit so it's not so super red. Come out here to the outer glow, set it to more of a white, and then set it to linear dodge. And, you know, eight pixels I think is going to be fine. I don't want it to be super big. It's still too big, actually. So again, come in here, and I'm probably going to push it back down to 4. And yeah, send its opacity down to like 30 on that outer glow. OK. So you should have something similar to this now. And the only thing remaining is to get the gradient or the the, the gradient to apply on the back of, of these layers here. So I think I achieved that by doing a, a layer. Let me double check. Yep. So basically, because remember, this layer is driving the color, and then these layers are, layers are just influencing the red, we're just going to come in and click on the slash background, which are those blurred slashes that we put on the background. and set it to a gradient overlay and select that gradient that we applied to the solid slashes and come in and set it to hmm, it's not wanting to do it for some reason or it's not doing it the way I was thinking it was going to it should let's just see why it's doing it Oh, just set to color. Okay, well, that makes sense. So make sure when you apply the gradient overlay that you put it to color. There you go. Okay. And uh, set that up here. Reverse it. You may have to play with the scale. Yep, you definitely have to play with the scale. Okay. I think I duplicated it one more time. Not 100%. Yeah. Yep. 
and this color is more of a red actually so let's remind let's remember to do that so remove the yellow whoops I don't know what to happen there so go back into the gradient move the yellow so there we go that should be a little better I guess and then I'm just going to duplicate the layer and put this to linear dodge there we go obviously I spent a little more time on this one to kind of fine tune it and get it to the look that I wanted but this is basically the concept here is that you come in here using the same method I did here you're gonna to have to fine tweak it a little and uh, and get it the way you want maybe play some of your layer stacking but you should get something kinda of like this after showing what I well, what we just go what we just went through man my mind's not on <laughs> on doing this video ever since that break so after that the last thing to do is to apply the background which is just this wood here and I got this from graphic burger and I'm gonna apply or put a link in the description where you can find this resource and uh, and download this if you decide to use this but I'm just gonna duplicate uh, this layer because this is this is the same file that you would get um, from Graphic Burger and I want to show you what I do to uh, edit it because it doesn't come out looking like this. So apply this to the background and it's probably turned on. Yep, turned on the texture, broke the clipping mask. So you'll notice that the background is not black and that's easy. We're just going to apply a gradient on the top. It's black. And uh, just click and drag. Whoop, make sure you have it set to a linear gradient. And that'll just darken that really quickly for you. Then the other thing that I do is I grabbed a curves tool or the curves adjustment layer and I applied it to a, uh, the top of that. And then just brought its black point down quite a bit. And also just drooped this down. See like that, and then I kicked up the highlight right here, and then just kind of had to play around with it to get it to look the way that I wanted it. And then, just so that you know, there's a gradient overlay on this, which gives it kind of a vignette setting. So if you bring it initially, it'll look like this, and with the gradient, it kind of draws the tension more, you know, towards the logo. And I did that with a, a radial. And I adjust the angle because for some reason the scale, even though you put up to 150%, it's not as wide as the gradient overlay. If you ever have that issue that it never covers enough the document, if you adjust the angle, it'll actually increase or decrease the gradient. And you can see that here. You know, basically 90 is its smallest. And if you go to 150, I found sometimes 150 and then sometimes 135 is the same thing. I don't know why it varies, but uh, that'll help you adjust the the gradient or the vignette on that background layer so there you have it this is a tutorial on how to create the Diablo 3 logo effect to any of your you know text or effects whatever it may be I hope you learned something I appreciate it please share and subscribe to my channel again you can find the resources on a link in the description and I just ask that you please refer to that that link on that page where you can find those resources thanks again my name is Matt and I'm with creative 8 have fun